Well, hello, crafters. This is Dawn with StampingWithDawn.com. I'm pulling up my phone to make sure I'm going live in the right spot. You guys do know me in technology, so you never know where I'm going to show up on here. Uh, one time for the Facebook Live, <laughs> um, it was for our team meeting. Actually, it's been several months ago, and you guys know I struggle with technology, but Hubs actually came out to help, and it ended up streaming to my personal page, our team meeting. And I know everybody wanted to know about Stampin' Up! stuff. So um, <laughs> it was just, so it, it made me feel kind of good because he's like a programmer and he's like crazy smart. He's a Mensa member. And it let me know that it wasn't just me having trouble with Facebook and Zoom. It was poor Paul was helping out and he even had trouble with it. So all right, it looks like I'm in the right spot. I got the notification. So if you guys are here, give a shout out, say hey. So, um, okay, let's see. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. There we go. Okay, so today is Sunday evening, which is February 13th. So today is Galentine's Day, if you want to look at it that way, if you've got some gal pals or Palentine's Day, if you got a guy pal, and then tomorrow would be Valentine's Day. So any way you want to slice it, it's really nice because you've got people in your life that you love. So we're going to chat for a few minutes until everybody gets on here. I belong to a tutorial group. I actually belong to two tutorial groups. And over the weekend, this past weekend, it just got so crazy hectic. I wasn't able to get caught up. I kept getting all these phone calls. I kept getting all these emails. I kept getting text messages. I kept getting private messages. I kept getting tagged on Facebook. And I was like, that's it. I'm done. I totally unplugged and was able to get a couple things done. So one of the things I'm going to share with you today is one of the tutorials that I did over the weekend. There's a group that I belong to called the Talented Tutorial Team. And those ladies, very talented. And what we do is we just have a theme. So for example, the February theme that we did last month was called Celebration because, you know, we are in the middle of celebration. And what we do on that one is one of the ladies combines everything all together, does it in a very nice PDF tutorial, and I email it to my customers. Well, the last few times it's been a very, very, very large file. And over the weekend, I got to play with it a little bit more and I was able to compress it and get it out to everybody. And that way then they got a smaller, it was still a big file, but it was small enough that it could be emailed. So that group, this is not the tutorial for that. The other group that I belong to is called Stamp and Share. And everybody just, um, I don't want to say donates because it's not really a donation. Uh, everybody does a design and then we share it with each other and then we're all able to recreate those cards in our business or use them. They have a lot of rules on it, which are great because you guys know me, I'm a rule follower. So it was really nice, but I wanted to do that card up because I had signed up for the Every Chapter stamp set. For those of you who know me, you know um, I did that retreat last month and there was a beautiful class on the Every Chapter. If you missed out on it, it's gone, um, but the next retreat will be in May. So make sure you do sign up for that. My retreats are very, very nice. So, um, but I played with that over the weekend because I had signed up for it. We have to sign up for our stamp set, I don't know, a month or two in advance. So I signed up for it last month. I think it was last month, maybe December, because I knew I was using that stamp set for the retreat. So it's a really fun stamp set. And I'm actually going to show you um, kind of how we played with it and you're going to use your marker on the stamp because that stamp, it's a beautiful stamp. It's this big one right here. It's called Every Chapter. And it's, you saw the coffee cup on there, the glasses and books. You knew I was going to buy this stamp set and you knew I was going to do a class on it, right? So I showed them how to marker, direct to marker on it and play with it that way. So that's kind of what I'm going to show you guys tonight. So see, the retreat ladies, they got way more stuff. I mean, they got a huge amount of stuff, so way worth it, but you're going to get one little tiny glimpse into what we did. So, oh, well, hello, Miss Lori. You're not working, girl? The other day you said you had to close, so we missed out on you. So, alrighty. Well, listen, I've chatted for a minute, so I'm going to flip this on over so that way you can see my hands right down here. And I'm ready, and let me see if I can do this without putting my glasses. One, two, three. Oh, look at that. There I am. Okay, let me flip over to here. 
I'll put on my glasses so I can actually see to stamp. And you guys can tell I was stamping all this weekend. I mean, I got so, I'm still behind, but I got way caught up. So I was real pleased with that one. So this is the stamp set is called Every Chapter and it is a one stamp. And you guys know I always keep the negative in here so that way then I can always see what stamps are missing. With this one, it's not a big deal because it's one stamp. It barely fits on, and this is the E or F, I think. It's the E, E Edward block on here. And you can see how big this thing is. And again, you guys know me. I do um, trim mine still. Oh, do you guys like my nails? Mom came over earlier today, and we were chatting, and I, I had some... Uh, Valentine's uh, color. Um, yeah. Yeah, the Valentine's one. So I, since Hubs and I are going out tomorrow for Valentine's Day, figured, well, there we go. I'll put that on tonight. Okay. So you want this stamp set. And again, it is the block E, like Edward on here, because that's pretty much the only one it fits on. It will fit on that big, huge one. I think that's the F. F block, that big, huge one. The only thing is, um, it's so big, I have trouble hanging on to it. So if you don't have the E block, you may want to use your Stamparatus. That's the easiest way to tell you on it. Okay, so we've got this. So I'll set this aside. And we are going to play with the... Let me pull this out so you can see which paper we're going to play with. It's in the mini catalog. And this paper, when I first saw it, I was like, yeah, I don't know that I really like it. I bought it, but I was like, I'm just not sure if I really like it. It is the Symbols of Fortune, and it's on page 23 in your mini catalog. And guys, this paper is stunning. One side of it is the metallic and the beautiful, shiny, all kinds of stuff. And then the other side, when you flip it over, is more muted or has like flowers. And it's just really pretty. Part of this whole suite, this is the Symbols of Fortune suite. We're only playing with that. We're going to play with these polished dots. And guys, these are either on back order or on low inventory. So if you don't have these, go ahead and get those now. We used them last month in the retreat. So if you were part of the retreat, you have a package of them. And then this right here is the Soft Succulent Satin Shimmer Ribbon. And that's actually part of the coffee club this month. So you have until the 15th to sign up for that one. I'll make sure I put the link on it. That's the one that's $39 and it gets shipped to you directly. You have to use your own stamp sinks and adhesives, but all the cards are cut, everything's ready to go. And you get like, I don't know, 20 some odd dollars worth of stuff in it. And again, you know, shipping's $10, so you're really getting a nice deal on that. We make five cards and one 3D item. So those are the main items we're playing with on here. So who's ready to create? Oh, didn't go far enough. There we go. I like to have the front page. I know. Alrighty, the first thing you're going to want to do, you guys know our markers are fabulous. This is the Basic Black Stampin' Write Marker. This is the only one you can buy by itself. It's a whopping $3. For the retreat, the ladies all got their own marker on it because I knew I was playing with the every chapter and I wanted to make sure they were able to ink it up. Alrighty, so, and I will give you the dimensions on this. There is not a PDF tutorial. So if you want that, just make sure you, um, well, I'll actually be doing this as uh, part of a class, so uh, let me know and we'll get that on there. Okay, the first thing is, this is the Smoky Slate, because that's one of the coordinating colors, and it's eight and a half by five and a half, and you're going to score here at four and a quarter. So there's that one. Then we have a bunch of different sizes. So I'm just going to build this layer by layer. This first one right here, this is Evening Evergreen, and it's one of the coordinating colors. And this one is four and one eighth inch across by five and three eighths inches. Now, guys, this right here is five and a half by four and a quarter. So it's just coming in an eighth of an inch on each side is how that works. So let me grab hold of my Fantabulous Seal Adhesive. You're going to take that and go ahead and, yeah, apparently should have grabbed my, uh, there it is. Okay. 
You do want your silicone mat in the event this doesn't start. Mine's over on the other side. I should have grabbed it. And then I was just put a little bit in the middle. Guys, I have had cards fall apart, so now I don't do that little, just put a little bit in each corner. I put it on all four sides and in the middle. It's adhesive. Make sure you use it. So here's this. Bring in this here, and you've seen me do this before. You kind of do a little hover, so that way then you can move it around. Uh, can you guys see this okay in here? Is it too dark? Let me see. I can bring a light in on here. Yeah, that's kind of dark with that dark color. All right, ready? And oh, look at that. There's some light. Uh, well, it's going to go that way. So, all right, we've got a little bit of light. So there, you can see that on here. Yeah, let me move that over just a bit. There we go. There we go. Okay, so there is our evening evergreen. And guys, you're going to want to pick out four different designs out of the paper so this one here has the calypso coral on this side Ooh, that does give a shadow sorry but i liked this one you guys see how pretty that looks with those gold in there this piece is going to be measured four inches by five and a quarter this is the same size that would go on the inside if it was a dark and you needed the insert so this will just go on that so we're going to grab hold here take that flip that one over and ta-da right there so again same thing we did all four corners it's not really going to matter which side is up or down because it mostly is going to get covered but i wanted it to be seen here so grab hold of that do your little hover and i forgot we're going to be playing with the blend so i'm going to go ahead and do the stamping first so it has time to dry while we're doing this so set this aside for right now we'll come back to the measurements you do want on one of the designer series paper this is the small one and you can see there's my little birdie there he's actually flying that way and this piece is this is the one we're going to stamp on this one is two two and three quarters by two and three quarters is the size on it and you can see the little birdie right here now i want the clouds now could i do it this way probably could but i know when i put my um, stamp onto it this is going to be seen so we're going to flip it and make sure it's going the correct way now here on the stamp and again we're doing this a little out of sequence because i do want this to dry for the purposes of this video and by the way guys before i forget if you do like my videos please do feel free to share these with your friends i do all different kinds of techniques tips tricks all kinds of fun stuff so if you've got a crafter in your life and you think she will enjoy this please do feel free to share with her all right so i'm gonna flip this over because you can see i inked this up before now can you see here on this it says i enjoy every chapter of our friendship and then it's got the coffee cup and the glasses well you can tell this whole thing is not going to fit onto this i'm just going to do the coffee cup and the glasses and then this book that says i enjoy but i don't want it to say i enjoy i want it solely to say enjoy that's all i want it to say is enjoy so when you do this i don't know if you can see there's still some of the black from there from before because like i said i just did this over the weekend the eye is the only thing you are not going to ink up dog hairs are free with this right okay so what you're going to do is you're going to use the brush tip and the brush tip is the one that has this wider white piece here versus the skinny white piece so you're going to take that and i always tell this at classes if you grab hold and you go like this and you start scribbling it's three dollars that's what you owe me because you've already ruined the marker and nobody can play with it so what you want to do is you want to hold it to the side like this like you're holding it parallel to the stamp and all you're doing is you're going along like this and you're just coloring the stamp so i don't know if you guys can see how that's being done so you're just going along on here now this will work with any of our markers but the black one is the only one that is sold by itself and we don't really have like a true black right now for a stamp pad that we no longer have like a basic black that's okay because we have the memento black and we've got stays on okay here let me pause for a minute i'm going to do the top line oh you can't see it there i'm going to do see the top of the book that's right here right underneath the i enjoy because that book is shorter that ends right here but if you can see, there's a line that goes further on along in there. Let me see if I cover that up, if you can see. 
there. Can you see that? So I want that line to be shown. I don't want the double line. I just want the one line to be shown. So that's how we're going to color it. And I'm going to save that for last. So I'm going along on here. And then I'm going to flip this over a little bit and go along in here. And I am going to color in the word enjoy. I am not going to do the letter I on it because I don't want it to say I enjoy. I just want it to say enjoy. This stamp set is perfect for anybody who's like in a book club or you've got a bookworm in your life or somebody who just is a book nerd. Hello, that would be me. Okay, so now that those are on, now what I'm going to do is very gently go along here and just do that top line all the way down. And I'm going to come over to here and just go along. And you're just really careful with it because you don't want to get that second line because then that's the book cover. Okay, so once you've got it all on there, everything's in there, you can then seal this up. And what you're going to do is you're going to pick it up and you're going to bring it to your mouth and you go, and that's just to re-moisten it. That's all the more you're doing. Okay, so now we've got this little piece here. So here's this. Can you guys see that little two and three quarter by two and three quarter? Make sure your birdie is going the right way so that he's not flying upside down, right? We're going to come over here and I am going to have to stand to make sure I get that and hopefully you don't get my noggin in here. And we're just going to go, here's the bottom. There's the line for the chapter and right about here. And because this is a larger stamp, you're going to grab hold and I just put my fist in it and I lean into it. That way then I'm sure I get a good image. If you want to go along, you can too. But ready for the moment. Ta -da. Ready, set. Ta-da! Now, the birdie is right there. You can see him right in there. That's his little beak, and then his little body with the wings are right along in there. That's okay. We want that. And I got it to, to the line to go the whole way across. Had I missed a little tiny bit, I would have taken my black marker, and I would have just extended the line. That's exactly all the more you're going to do on that piece right there. So now we're going to set this aside so it can dry. And then we'll go back to building the card base. So I'm just going to set that one right up here. Alrighty, so we'd already given these. Then the next part, and this one is a huge paper saver. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of little tips, tricks, and techniques on it. This would actually go all the way across, but you can see on here, this was a scrap. And I didn't have enough to have it go the whole way across. <coughs> Excuse me, so I'm going to show you a way to extend it that nobody's going to know but you. And this is, make sure I got the right ones here, yep. This is one and three quarters inches, and then it should be roughly four and three eighths inches if you wanted to use the whole piece onto it. Here's how you do a paper saver. I just took this. And I had some other scraps. So see, I still made it the same width here, but I just made this roughly, I think it's about three quarters of an inch. Yeah, it's about three quarters of an inch because I knew only about a half an inch would show. So I did two of those so I could put one on each side. So instead of it going all the way across, it's only going to be on these two sides. See how we're building this right now? But wait, there's more. Then you would also normally if this was going all the way across, you'd have this piece of paper going all the way across with it as well. Actually, I wanted this side. Going all the way across as well. Again, I only had a scrap. So, and this is, again, this was, what, one and three quarters? So this would be one and five eighths inches tall. So here is how you extend your paper. You ready? We're going to take that little piece right here, and we're going to go along on here, and we're just going to put a little bit of adhesive not all the way to the edge and that went down just a bit further than i wanted it to so we're just going to roll that up okay so can you see that little piece right there and i just have a little bit of adhesive not here on this border but i do have it going all the way there and then i'm going to take this piece here and i'm just going to line it up and put it like that do you guys see that one i know right how cool then the other piece here, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Again, going right up until the one edge and leaving uh, there. Can you guys see leaving the edge along in here? 
And then what I'm going to do is do it as the reverse. So it looks like this is just, I got to do it this way. Sorry, guys. I am right handed, so I have to do it this way. So now I'm just putting that along in here. There. Can you guys see? So see that little teeny tiny piece? Then you grab your little snips right here. And if you wanted, you could just cut straight down and save that little one inch piece. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to go whoosh and just cut them apart like this. Okay. So how you do this is we take hold here and we flip this upside down. Did you guys know you could extend your paper like this? This makes it so much easier. And this paper is beautiful. I mean, absolutely stunning. And like I said, when I saw it in the catalog, I was like, I don't know that I really like this. Oh yeah, I really like this paper. All right, so let's see. I want it to go about, hmm, we'll just do it, say right about here. So I'm lining that up. See how the green looks like it continues straight on down? See if I can bring that up so you guys can see. The green just lined right up with it. And then that's there. And then over here, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this to line it up. And this is truly personal preference. You can take a ruler and line that up here. And hope and pray you got it going the right way across. You don't have it cattywampus. And you can do it over here. So, again, nobody can tell that it's piecemealed together. Or you can line it up along in here, and this is where you've got your grid paper for. <laughs> and you can line that up there and here. So we're just going to bring that over to here. And you just line this up over here then. See how I've got that little line right there? That's why you use the grid paper. The grid paper is fabulous. So see, now those are lined up. They just go right on across, just like that. And you can see I had the line started here and here. This happens to be the paper pumpkin with that big red um, square here in the center. Most of the grid papers don't have that, so that's okay there. Okay, let's see. Oh, it says no, off. you're off. Woohoo, way to go, girl. Hello, Miss Deborah. How are you? Hello, Miss Betty. So can you see how that is right in there? And again, we saved, I know that's not a huge amount, but that's like two inches, yeah, one and a half inches. So yeah, I did save that. And had I chosen to cut that little one inch piece, I would have saved almost two and a half inches. Guys, that's a strip that I can use. I know you can always buy more paper, but oh my gosh, this paper is stunning. Okay, so we've got this. Then the next thing we're gonna do Again, this is your third pattern. This is pattern one, pattern two, and pattern three. This pattern is, not in centimeters, one inch by four inches. And then the coordinating evening evergreen is four and an eighth by one and an eighth. So everything's only like, only like one eighth inch larger than the designer series paper. Guys, if you also got that Calming Camellia, which is the new host set with Stampin' Up!, this paper looks beautiful with it. It almost matches. I just, I think this is beautiful with it. So uh, you may see me, because I've been trying to get those Calming Camellia stamp sets. You may see a class available for that in the coming months. Just saying, because this paper is here through May. Okay, so you're just going to play with this and lean her down here. Give her a little bit of the border on it. That yeah, looks close. Okay, so before I put this down, I'm going to show you something. Oh, let me move this piece away. The last piece that you want, because remember this was two and three quarters by two and three quarters. This one is going to be two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. So it's not quite three inches. It's just a little bit under. This piece will go on here and then see how this is open in here. This will go into here. But wait, there's more. So what I'm going to do is not put this one together on here yet because I want to make sure that it's going to line up. I guess I could do this. Grab your green paper and your dimensionals because this square piece is the only piece that's going up on dimensionals. So I think there's a good or bad on to it. We're going to put our four corners onto it. And you guys have seen me do this. You do your four corners and then one in the middle. So again, it's the clock. Noon, three, six, nine, and one here in the middle. 
So we're going to pick this up. Go ahead and peel those off. There we go. And then this will go on to here. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and see, okay, so right about there is where I want it. So see, it's about a finger's width over here. So I'm going to grab hold, grab hold of my seal. I love my seal. So is everybody having a good weekend? I still have my craft room to do. I am so far behind on it. And taxes. I got to do those too. Ugh, hate taxes. I think everybody does, right? I know it's a necessary evil, right? So remember here we've got this and I'm going to grab hold. And again, I'm just eyeballing. So I want this to go about here. And there's so much gold here on this. I'm actually going to bring this piece up a little bit. So I know it's not, this is a small border up here and a much larger border here. That's okay. And then this piece is going to go right here into about there. All right. So our card is almost ready. Now this is where the magic happens. This should be pretty well dry by now. So I went ahead and I couldn't figure out which color I wanted to play with. So I grabbed a bunch of them. I know, right? If you don't have any of our blends, definitely you want to get our blends. Our blends are so fun. So the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted the, um, the glasses to be purple. I know that's what I wanted. So I wanted to grab fresh freesia because this is soft succulent. And then we also have the evening evergreen. So I wanted to stick with the in colors and we've got fresh freesia. So what I did was I grabbed the dark one first. And if you've not played with our, our blends, I prefer to start with the dark first. That's just my personal preference. Some people prefer to start with the light. That's up to you. You play with them. You get both of them for the light and the dark when you buy the colors. So you get to choose. So you can see I'm just coming along in here and all I'm doing is the corner, the corners, and then right here into the center where the, the nose frame is, the nose piece is right here. That's all I did with the dark fresh freesia. You guys see that right there? Okay. Then I'm going to grab hold of the light and I'm going to go along on here and just do that for the frame because that's sticking in the back. Do this frame here. And guys, you can use whatever coloring medium you prefer. If you'd rather use markers, use markers. If you'd rather use watercolor pencils, use watercolor pencils, use your blends, use your water painters. We have a lot of choices. Ooh, those pastels too. Those are pretty too. So you can see I'm just kind of picking up here from the dark and bringing that in from both sides till it meets in the middle. And then the same thing here. I'm just going along from the dark and bringing that along so it meets here in the middle. Ta-da, look at that. Now that's a little bit too light there on that frame. So I'm going to make that one a little darker. All right. So now I'm done with the fresh freesia. And if you did not know this on our blends, are you ready? It flips over. Can you guys see that purple in there? It bleeds through. That's why you always want to have another layer under it before you put it onto your card base. So there I'm done with my fresh freesia. Then I'm going to grab and I'm missing one. No, I'm not. The soft succulent, and this is the light soft succulent. Yes, I am. I need the dark soft succulent too. Ha! Ah. Thought it got away from me. Look at that. Okay. So again, starting with the light to the dark, or the dark to the light, I mean. I'm doing the dark down here on the bottom on the first one, the top here on the second one, and then I go down here again on the bottom, and then the top, and then the bottom, and then, the, oops, well, that one's both. So bottom, top, bottom, and top. Usually you wouldn't mess that up, but I'm talking, so that happens. Does anybody else ever have that happen to them on there? So, well, hello, Miss Marsha. So late, but I can rewatch. I love this stamp and have it order. Oh, honey, I have made so many cards with this. I love this stamp set. Love. All right, so we've got our dark in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the light soft succulent, and I'm just kind of blending it into the dark. That's all the more I'm doing because I wanted this to kind of blend with the pattern paper behind it on here. And this pattern paper is just so pretty. Like I said, um, I think some people think this one might actually be a sleeper. So do go ahead and order it while you can. So there, I'm done with my soft succulent and my fresh freesia. So I'm going to set those aside. 
I'm also done with my basic black for a moment. I might come back to that one. Now the book, I wanted it to look like an old leather bound book, kind of like the kind that you, that you would see like, I don't know, like in a cigar bar type of thing. So what I chose to grab were the dark and light cinnamon ciders, again, an in color so you know it coordinates. I grabbed my light smoky slate and then I think I grabbed both of these. Yep, I have my light and my dark crumb cake because I wanted it to look aged. That was my whole goal on this. So if you've never colored back and forth on this, I'm going to show you how to do it. Again, I prefer to start dark to light. Totally up to you however you wish to do. So in looking at this, I would say the cinnamon ciders are the darkers. My dark crumb cake is next, and then probably light smoky slate, and then light crumb cake. To me, that would be the order. So I'm going to start up here at the top with the dark cinnamon cider. And all I'm going to do is come along in here and color some there. And then I'm going to come down here and color some. And put some along in here, some down here, put across the center, come over to here. And you're just kind of dabbing. You're just putting some different little shades in there. Do you see how I'm doing all of that, guys? See, it kind of looks kind of wonky, but trust me, it will pay off in a few minutes. So there's my dark cinnamon cider. Then I'm gonna grab hold of my light cinnamon cider. And I'm gonna kind of go in between, still filling in a little bit here and there. Because remember, again, I wanted this to look like an old leather bound book. Okay, so we're just kind of going along, maybe a little bit more there. It is not this, if you ever sit here and think, oh, well, that's got to be perfect. It doesn't, guys. It's coloring. Coloring is supposed to be fun. Then here's my dark crumb cake. Same thing. And guys, I prefer to use the pen tip on it. It just makes it easier for me. And I will tell you, you want to be kind of close. Um, be careful when you get to the edges. And when I show you my sample, you'll see why. Okay, so there's the dark crumb cake. Then we've got our light smoky slate, and I'm just going to kind of feed those in here. Just filling in a little bit more onto the, the open spots that you can kind of see. And again, I'm staying away from the very edge, and that will become clear when you see my sample. So there, I'm. see how I just kind of blended those all together? So the only thing I have left is my light crumb cake. Can you guys see that okay? How all those different colors are there? And you can still very clearly see all of the colors. That's okay. So what we're going to do next is we're going to grab our light crumb cake because to me this was the lightest. You may have thought it was the light smoky slate. There's really not a yes or no answer. You just choose whatever you guys want. So I've got my light crumb cake and on this one what I'm going to do is I'm going to just sit here and go back and forth and blend everything together. And I find it's easier if I make it into a circular motion, make big circles. And just, you're trying to move everything all in together. And over here on the end, I'm just gonna real quick do a little bit of the light crumb cake. Go along in there and you're just blending it all together. So now there's that. So now I'm gonna go back over and grab my light smoky slate. I'm gonna do the same thing all over again. Again, just moving it and still being very careful here on the edges because you don't want a lot of the alcohol base on there because it will bleed over. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab hold of the dark crumb cake. And now I'm gonna just kind of go over that once real easy. So you saw I started with the light and then I went, or I'm sorry, I started with the dark and then I went to the light and then I went backwards. Okay, then the last thing, those two like bindings, I wanted those to show. So I'm going to take my dark cinnamon cider and I'm just going to go over those real quick. Okay, so can you guys see this now? One, this is how it looks on the back. But see, look at it here. You can barely see the word enjoy anymore and you can barely see the detail. 
Now you're going to grab back your basic black marker. See, did you know you could do this? I mean, oh my gosh. And Marsha says, I do much better stamping alone. I always make boo-boos when chatting. <laughs> Amen, sister. And says, wow, I needed this demo. Thanks. Well, thank you, Miss Marsha. If you enjoy it, please do feel free to share. That really helps me out. And it'll help out you and your friends because, again, this is perfect for coloring. Okay, so... What I'm going to do, I don't need to do the outside layers, but what I'm going to do, can you see how you can barely see? And I know the light is not the best, but you can barely see the bindings on here. So I'm going to take my black pen tip side of my basic black marker, and I'm just going to redraw in the lines. And then I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to put those little lines in to go back along on it. Now, guys, it doesn't have to match perfectly because it's already got a little bit underneath. There, can you guys see that? How this one right here is done? And then we're going to do the exact same thing over here. So this is what this is one of the reasons why you definitely want a black magic marker or the black um, stamp and write marker. I love our markers. You guys know that. Um, and you can buy these individually. So again, for $3, I tell people buy two. It's just so much easier. And then over here, you're going to do the same thing on the book for the edges for your pages along in here. And we're just going to redraw that line. And remember that little birdie was there. See, you can barely see him now. I know. And again, there's the line there. And then here for your enjoy, guess what we're going to do? That's right, we're going to go back over and fill it back in. So you're just going to kind of gently do it. And again, guys, this stamp set is absolutely fabulous. And like I said, I did a retreat. They got a class out of it. They got three designs out of this. And guys, not to, you know, break, you know, break my arm, pat myself on the back. They were pretty cards. I mean, really pretty cards. I mean, if you missed out on it, I kind of feel bad for you, but... I gave plenty of notice, so, you know, sorry. But just make sure when I do the retreats or when I do a class, if it even remotely interests you, sign up for it. I mean, it's really kind of nice. If you guys like how I do my videos here, this is exactly how I do my retreats. I mean, it's just kind of nice. All right, can you guys see how the word enjoy is starting to show back up? See, look at that. Isn't that so cool? All right. I can't really see it on my little TV, my little um, um, telephone screen. So I hope you guys are seeing it okay. All right. So we're just going to go along on here and make my O. And again, sorry if my noggin's in there, guys. Um, you know, when you color, you got to stick your tongue out and just kind of type of thing while you're coloring so see you got to do that that's what you just it's part of the coloring process guys okay can you guys see that now how cute that is and we just filled it back in it was just literally fill in the blanks all right so here's this okay so now this is oh no i did want to do a little bit more um the green the light soft succulent because yes that's clouds there so i'm just going to kind of put a little bit of green underneath here and just kind of bring it down a little bit nothing fancy there so it just looks like you know it's not necessarily floating in the air but there's a little bit oops missed some there there's a little bit of color underneath it right okay so there's that how pretty is that and guys remember we went from oops from this whole stamp to just this one little two and three quarter piece by two and three quarters I know right I know Okay, the blends dry almost immediately, so you don't really have to wait for them to do, but what I am going to do is go ahead and put it here on the card because we're going to do some more stuff to it, and I want to make sure I don't stick my finger into it. So we're going to take this, flip her over, and remember, it's still got all of that different, um, the blends bled through onto it. So make sure that you put enough adhesive that this piece doesn't fall apart. So again, I do all four corners and I put a little bit there in the center. Make sure my card's opening the right way. And then this is going to go here. But wait, there's more. Okay, remember me talking to you guys about those beautiful polished dots? You can I always put an X on mine so I know which one is open and which one I am using on that. Okay, so you're ready? 
we're going to open these up there are two shades in here and it's listed in the catalog but it's not listed on here so guys i always make myself a note so i know what colors are on these these are calypso coral and very vanilla so calypso coral and very vanilla so you're going to grab those and you want to make sure you grab hold of your take your pick tool because trust me you definitely want your take your pick tool well my goodness who put this on here cattywampus i tell you okay we're going to be very careful on peeling this up because this is a work of art you guys know i love books i life has just gotten so busy lately i have now i pretty much solely listened to books on tape I just can't seem to um, sit down and read anymore. I just don't have the, I don't make the time for it. Although I do have one that is not available in um, online. So that one is definitely uh, going to have to be sat down and read. So I love books and I don't think there's any of my BSF ladies on here that follow me. But what else I'm gonna do is I'm going to do this. We're doing the book of Matthew is what we're doing for our Bible study fellowship. So for the end of the year, I'm gonna do, I enjoy every chapter of, and I'll move the of into the center, Matthew. And I'll just hand write out Matthew. And that's the card I'll give to each of the ladies at the end of the year, so shh, don't tell anybody. Okay, so let's see if I can put this back on here the right way. It looks like that's off just a tinge, but at least this way then it's lined up. Okay, so there that's back on, okay. So the purple glasses, remember, and my old glasses used to be purple. Now they're gray and tan and brown and all that. What I'm going to do is take two of these small of the Calypso Coral. Oh, goodness, definitely got adhesive on me. And grab hold of that. And I'm going to put one here on this corner up here by those glasses. And I'm going to come over here and put one over here on this corner on those glasses. See how cute those are? Look at how adorable. And there's more. Wait. Then I'm going to grab the big one, or the um, the very vanilla ones, and I'm actually going to use two big ones and one small. Um, this is a dead space up here. I've got something to go there, so I'll show you there in a minute. So I want to put these down here. So I'm going to put one right here. So that way, then it looks like it goes with that piece of whatever I don't know what that leaf or branch or whatever is. So there's one there. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put one right up here. So it's right there. And I'm going to take one of the small of the clear ones, which again, we know is very vanilla. And I'm just going to put that one right here. So see, there's my triangle. And we've kept odd numbers because that's my three, four, and five. So again, we're, we're set. We've got, we're following all the rules. I know, right? Okay, so I'm going to put this back away because otherwise I will lose the either the little plastic sleeve or I will lose the other. So just remember, Calypso Coral and Very Vanilla. And guys, again, I just wrote that on the back of this package, so I've always got it. Okay, so there's that. Then the next part that's part of this. Um, oh, well, hello, Miss Pam. It's nice to see. Oh, hello, Miss. Uh, I've got two Marshas, Marsha with S-H-A and Marsha with C-I-A. And then Miss Dana, hello, Miss Pam, hello. Oh, and thank you so much, Miss Pam, for sharing. I appreciate that. And Marcia says, definitely did a great job. Oh, I know. Doesn't that look like an old book? Okay, this is the Soft Succulent Satin Shimmer Ribbon. And again, guys, this goes with that sweet. You can see it's still here on the, the spool, right? Do you guys know how to tie off of the spool? I'm going to show you if you don't. How many times do we take it and we go like this and we say, okay, uh, I'm not sure how much I'm going to need. I think I only need here, so I'm going to take it and I'm going to cut. And then you've got this big, long piece. Well, then you usually throw away a piece of it, right? So again, here's a tip, trick, or technique. It's attached here onto the spool. You guys can see it's still on here, right? Okay, so I've got this. So I'm going to unwind it a little bit longer than what I need. And then all I'm going to do is tie a knot in this. So I'm going to do this right here. Oh, I didn't grab my ribbon scissors. Well, we'll see how well I do. So see, I'm going along here and I'm going to fiddle with it and play with my knot to get it to lay the way I want it. And as I'm doing, I just keep pulling taut. Okay, so see, here's my piece here. So I can see this side here and I know, okay, I want it about here and hope and pray that my scissors will cut my ribbon without fraying it badly. Always keep a pair of snips for your good ribbon. So then here, boom, you've got it done and you didn't waste any ribbon. It still is attached. Did you guys know how to do that? I also do that when I'm tying my bows. Like if I'm going to tie a bow, 
I have a bow tire, so I sit here and I go along like that and tie it, and then I just trim it right off on that. It works for that too. I actually had a bow tire. One of my customers, she's a friend too, but one of my customers, her husband does woodworking. He actually made a custom bow tire for me, and there's even a spot to hold the spool for the ribbon. I love it. I think he charges like $25 for him. If anybody's interested, let me know. The shipping charges will be like astronomical, so you won't be able to get that, but if you are local and you want one. So here's my bad side of my ribbon, because you can see it's, that's not the pretty side. This is the pretty side. Here's my glue dot. I just open that up, press that right into the glue dot, and then grab hold of the little leg here, pull it up, ta-da! And I'm going to come over here and set this onto there. Now, if you wanted, you could trim that. I'm not. I just, I love that ribbon. That's why we're using it this month for the, the coffee club. So here I'm putting my glue dots back. But wait, there's more. Did you guys know this card would be so wow? I know, right? Grab your wink of Stella. Shake it up. And now on this one, if you don't play with the Wink of Stella, listen up on this one because you will want to know this. Trust me on this one. Ask me how I know on here. Oh, well, hello, Miss Cindy. Okay, first off, we're going to color the little green, those little green leaves here on the coffee cup. I'm just going to go along in here, and we're just putting a little bit of sparkle. Um, I don't know if you, can you guys see how that little bit of sparkle is on there? Because let's face it, the whole card is sparkly, so we want this to sparkle too. Now we're not going to do anything to the book because the book is very old and very aged so we're not going to sparkle that thing up at all so we're just doing there okay so i've got my little leaves are all sparkled up and you want to let it dry so that's why we're doing this after everything is all on now here's the part you want to pay attention to it picks up the ink on the tip of your wink Stella, so you do need to wipe it off and it just keeps doing it until there's no longer any ink onto it. Then you can go to your next color. So my next color I want to do is not the purple glasses frames. I want to do the eyeglass part where your glass would be or your plastic now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just the piece that's right in here. I'm not hitting any of the purple. So the little part that's right there for the purple frame yeah, we're not hitting that, and you're being real careful not to get any of the black in here. I think I hit that. So you do want to wipe those off, and see this way then it makes it look like your glasses have a reflection on them. I know! Did you know you could do that? Okay, so now I've got all of that done. I don't have there. I think you guys can see that. You can see the frame doesn't have any of the sparkle on. So now I'm just going to very gently go across it with the Wink of Stella to hit that and then I'm going to do the same thing over here and just go right across that. So that way then the whole thing sparkles so where the lenses are those sparkle. Make sure you put this away and now officially we are done. So let me see this is the one we just made. Now I'm going to show you the boo-boo on my other one and again guys if you guys think this is a nice video, please do share it with your friends because I'm not kidding you. I just gave you guys a very, um, this was pretty much a technique class. You would have normally paid me anywhere from $25 to $35 just to know half of the stuff. So this is a free class. Obviously, my paid-for classes have a lot more to them. So if this is something that you like, please do think about it. Okay, so this is the one we just made, and then this is the one that is dry and was my sample. And I'm going to show you over here. Can you guys see how the gray has extended beyond the line of the book? That's because I had too much of the blends onto it. When I did it, it got too wet, so it mushed out, and it did it down here too. Now, could I have taken my color lifter and done it? Sure could have. But again, I wanted this to look aged, so I didn't really care. It might just look like a shadow to it. So there's those two right there. Can you guys see those okay? Let me see. Let me pull that up. And let's see. You know what? Let's flip over here. Ready? One, two, three. There we go. Okay. So this right here is the one we just made. Oops. Look at how pretty that is. I mean, guys, this thing is beautiful. And then this is the one that I had for my sample, and you might be able to see a little bit better here on the edge 
how that gray uh, went on there. And then down here by where the pages were, there's a little tiny speck of gray on there. And again, guys, I put the, um, there we go, the Wink of Stella is on that. This is so stinking pretty. I mean, it is just a beautiful card. And guys, this stamp set is not that expensive, but man, imagine all the stuff you could do with it. Think about it for like a grandma. There's one, two, three, there's four books on there right now. Um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, if they, if that's all their kids' names. Or like my family, it's Dawn and Davy. So I could have just done Dawn and Davy and the coffee cup and the glasses on it. Could add the parents' names onto it. When I did the retreat, I showed the ladies how to do it without inking up the inside of it. You can kind of figure that out because I showed you how to do it without inking up the letter I. It's the exact same premise. So again, guys, these are the kind of classes I do. If you like them, I hope you consider taking a class from me. Most of my classes are under $40. Retreats obviously are way more, but you get way more on the retreat. So, so what do you think? Did, how many of you guys have this stamp set first off? It's called Every Chapter. Anytime there's anything with coffee in it, I always buy it. I know. I, um, there's a local uh, craft show was today. So we're going to chat for a minute. Uh, there was a local craft show today and mom and I went. See, I even got new earrings there. My little earrings, my $10 earrings. Um, but I have a coffee mask. And at one of the booths, the lady was like, oh, I love that mask. And I'm like, honey, I would take it intravenously if I could. So as soon as I saw this, I knew I was buying it. I wear glasses. It's got the coffee cup and it's got a stack of books. Guys, you guys could even make a big, huge stack. How many of us have a rumkey stack of books that we need to be reading? We've got them sitting there. We just haven't read them, right? Amen. Um, you guys could have so many different things. Your book clubs, your Bible studies, um, the librarian, anybody that you know. This would be a perfect book for them. Any, or perfect book, perfect stamp for them. So, guys, you don't have to use all of them. You can just do... Actually, for the uh, retreat, we did one that was just simply the coffee cup and the glasses. That's all the more that was on it. And we did the word friendship that's right here. We did that all by itself. So, guys, you are truly limited only by your imagination. For those of you who took my retreat, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For those of you who missed out, make sure you start signing up for my classes so you don't miss out on any of this stuff. If you like this video, please do share it. If you like this card, Please make this card, send this card, share your gifts and talents with other people. That's why we make cards. Okay, let me see now if there's any comments on here. Uh, guys, right here is the host code. You guys know the birthday card series is going on right now. As long as you place your $35, $35 order or more before shipping and taxes, you'll get the birthday card series class for this month. It's eight cards, four designs, two of each. I ship it to you, or if you're local, I drop it off to you. You still have to use your own stamp sinks and adhesives, but it's a nice way to play with some different items. If it's after the 16th, you still use the same host code there, you'll get the all occasions card class. I just divvy it up. 15th, you get the birthday. Ooh, 16th and beyond, you get the all occasions card class. The other class that you can currently sign up for right now, and it's only through Tuesday, it ends on the 15th, is the Coffee Club. And that's the one that we're doing, the Daffodil Daydream. You're getting a half a packet. Hold on, I'll show you. You are getting a half a package of the In Color Shimmer Vellum. You're getting a package of the Iridescent Rhinestones, and you're getting a package of that beautiful uh, Soft Succulent Satin Ribbon. Guys, I've been stockpiling these iridescent rhinestones because I think they're going to sell out. So if you're already one of my subscribers that you do it every month, I have one for you. If um, you haven't signed up for it and you're like, ah, I might try this one out, you may or may not get the iridescent rhinestones. I have enough for a couple more uh, beyond my regular ones, but uh, you will get a suitable substitute. But the designs all use the iridescent rhinestones. And then you get the five cards plus the, uh, the sixth item, which is a 3D item. So, all right, were there any questions on it? But just make sure if you do want the birthday card club or the birthday club, try again, the birthday card class, you have to use the host code unless it's over $150. If it's over $150, 
don't use the host code, you'll still get it. So 35 gets you the birthday card series right now. 50 gets you that talented tutorial team tutorial, which is about 15 tutorials. And right now we're doing the celebration ones um, for next month. I think it was spring is what we did. Um, I'm using the new flowering tulips for that class. So you'll get to see that card on there. 75 or above gets you a surprise embellishment and you always get a thank you note. So with that, guys, I think there's everything else on here. Let me see. Let's see. Um, that clear lens is getting wink. Oh, yeah, I do that all the time with glasses. Pam says, beautiful. Thank you, John. Have a great week. Thank you, Miss Pam. You also. Miss Margaret, hello. Watching from Rhode Island. I oh, love New England. And thank you, Miss Margaret, for sharing. Carrie Taylor and Lori says, great project. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, from the Rhode Island lady, I used to live up in Maine. I was stationed at Loring Air Force Base. New England is a beautiful part of our country, guys. If you've never seen it, you definitely need to go. Uh, pretty much, though, go from July through about, mm, let's go with the end of August, beginning of September. Because other than that, you might see the beautiful fall foliage, but it's going to be a little cold up there. They are really cold. The year that I left, I left in January. It was Martin Luther King weekend in January. And uh, Maine does fantabulous with the snow removal. And I'm presuming Rhode Island is the same way. Um Man, there was 38 inches of snow in a 24-hour period, um, you know, that weekend. And I was leaving on Martin Luther King Day that Monday to drive back here to Ohio. Oh, my God. The roads were clear. Clear as a bell. I had a low-lying. It was a an, um, it was an EXP. Nobody knows what that is. Does anybody remember the old Escort? So it's a small, it was, you know, it sat closer down to the ground. It had an Escort frame to it, if you remember the old Ford Escort had not nary a problem with any snow, ice, or anything. And I drove the whole way back here to Ohio. Easy peasy on it because, man, New Englanders, they know how to do snow removal. You guys are good up there. So Rhode Island, I hope you guys are doing okay with the um, the weather. I'm sure you are because, again, I, I lived up in New England. We uh, Loring was eight miles from Canada was where we were. And... Uh, yeah, I got a little cold up there. I miss my mucklucks and my uh, extreme cold weather gear parka. That thing was really warm. So, alrighty, guys. I hope you guys have a great night. Make sure you tune in on Wednesday. You might see a little bit of a surprise on Wednesday. Um, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Okay, so I will see you guys later. Thanks so much for tuning in. And thank you guys so very much for sharing my video, for liking my video, for giving a thumbs up, a heart, anything like that. Even if you don't buy from me, which of course I would love for you too, it makes me do very well in the search engines by you guys liking, commenting, sharing, all of that kind of stuff. So I know you probably have another demonstrator or you may be a demonstrator as well. By just liking it, that helps me out tremendously. So if you guys do like these videos, I do hope you do share them. And I hope you make a card like this because this stamp set's the bomb, guys. I love this stamp set. It's, I love it. Love, love, love. So have a great night, guys. Enjoy, and I will see you on Wednesday. And that would be the, what's that, the 16th? The 16th. So in the meantime, I hope you had a happy Galentine's Day today, or happy Palentine's Day today, or a happy Valentine's Day tomorrow. Regardless, do show your love to other people. Um, what is that? The greatest commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself, right? There you go. Love one another and love your neighbor as yourself. So share the love, okay? You guys make beautiful cards. I gave you a wonderful sample. Just go back and watch the video for all the dimensions, and you guys can make a card like that too. Have a good night, guys. Continue to bless others. Bye-bye now.